Okay. Heroes of the Storm, PTR notes, June 5th. It's Monday today. As expected, we are getting the PTR. And until June 12th, it's available. Saved. Until June 12th, it's available. And then it should be up by June 13th, which is a Tuesday uh, for America. And for Europe, generally, it is going to be the 13th then on Wednesday, either very early in the morning or in the afternoon or yeah, somewhere in the morning usually. So for people that uh, work or go to school or have normal schedules, Wednesday for Europe, Tuesday for America. So here they are. What we know is Malthael is going to be a part of it. Malthael is going to be playable on PTR. That should be right now. And we're going to play that right after this. Now let's take a look what this patch has in store for us in terms of bug fixes, balance changes, design changes, new hero, and possible reworks. First of all, there's going to be Malthael's bargain event, apparently. You can earn epic in-game rewards in both Diablo 3 and Heroes of the Storm just by playing HOTS with a friend. Play 15 games in any, uh, in any mode. You can get the Heroes, Leoric Phantom Charger Mount, and one epic loot chest. For Diablo 3, Ghost Kerrigan Wings. It starts in a week, and it ends two weeks after that. New Hero Malfael. That video is on YouTube already. Exclamation mark Malfael in Robogrub's chat to see that video. You may have already seen that. We've gone over his traits, basic abilities, heroics, and of course he has talents now as well. And we should be able to see his HP and damage as well. So we'll take a look at those values right after this. General user interface. Holding shift, shift and left clicking an announcer will now create a chat link that directs other players to that item. Also for all the other new aesthetics. This was previously not possible. It was possible for heroes and classes, but not this yet. And that's pretty interesting. And then you can link to it for someone else. It's just a thing that needed to be done. Not super impactful, I suppose. But uh, ni nice to complete that as well. A close to leveling sorting option has been added. Oh, that's nice. And you can see which heroes. This was asked for by the community as well. So nice, nicely delivered. And when two or more heroes are tied for XP, those heroes will further be sorted by release date. Oh, huh. that's, uh, <laughs> that's unexpected. I would say alphabetical or whatever, whatever. Okay, force move. When a hero receives a force move command, they will move to the target point without attacking any units on the way or anything that was clicked when the command was issued. Okay, so... Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So right now, this is exactly what exists in RTSs, where you press M and then left click. You press M and then left click, and then you move somewhere without attacking. That was a way in Warcraft 3 and Starcraft 2 to get around places without attacking creeps and opponents, even if you happen to move left click on an enemy unit. Now you can do this in Heroes as well, apparently, which is kind of important. Nice for Nova, Ceratuls that don't want to reveal themselves, and also people that don't want to dismount themselves, and so on and so on. Alt, Control, Shift can now be set as modifiers for basic alt keys. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to use that, but only because I'm not experiencing with it yet. But I believe this is very important to a MOBA, so very nice, very nice bonus. New mastery taunts have been added and can be unlocked on a per hero basis. Now, as far as I know, mastery taunts right now weren't working, so I'm assuming they're coming out with a fix for that as well. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, we'll see how that goes. Hero levels that grant multiple progression rewards will no longer take up two or more slots. In the quest log. Instead, hovering the cursor over that slot will now display a tooltip that communicates all rewards granted upon reaching that level. Okay. Lessened personal rank adjustment in both Hero and Team League, which will allow players' ranks to move more quickly during win or loss streaks. Okay. 
Well, that's good. Because personal rank adjustment just keeps you where you are forever. I think that's really good. <laughs> you just won 10 games in a row. But I'm going to disadvantage your point gain because I don't believe that you are that good. Yeah, will be, will be a bit more fluctuation. A bit more climbing when you deserve climbing. That's nice. Still don't know about MMR though. They need to adapt people's MMR more readily as well to wins and losses. And place new players a little bit lower. Team League matchmaking will now allow players to wait indefinitely until the system finds a reasonable match for the skiller. Will now allow players. So that sounds like an option. Until the system finds a reasonable match for the skill level. When average queue times for two player parties in Team League become lengthy, the leaders from additional two player parties attempting to enter the queue will see a warning message that they may be in for a long wait. When this occurs, the party leader can choose to enter the lengthy queue or cancel the queue to find additional party members and get a match more quickly. That's kind of good. Cooldowns for abilities and talents that can be toggled on and off have been unified to half a second across the board. Okay. While most of these abilities and talents already had half a second delay, there were a few outliers which have now been updated. Thrall Spell Shield, Murky Murlocs and Underwork Legion of Beetles. That's a good one. I find half a second to be very intuitive. It's long enough not to fall to a double click usually, but it's not one second which is too long and makes it feel very clunky. Bolt of the Storm range has been reduced by 20%. Wow. New Bolt alternatives have been added to several heroes. While we love Bolt of the Storm and the playmaking potential that it provides, we believe that the talent is too often used as an extra escape. We have also received feedback that Bolt could have more awesome moments in his playmaking potential if it were more tied to offensive use cases. Our goals with the changes are twofold, to consolidate Bolt of the Storm to heroes where we think it makes for awesome gameplay moments, and secondly, to create use cases where it is more optimal to use Bolt to make offensive plays. We hope that these changes create more interesting moments for the late game, where heroes can shine by making risky plays to ensure victory for their team. Okay. So... It's a little bit like the Dwarf Toss treatment. Muradin used to have Dwarf Toss, where he gained unstoppability and no armor. Now, they removed unstoppability, which makes it harder as an escape, and they gave him armor, so it's more of an engage. So I'm expecting them to give extra damage, extra armor, by using Bolt as an escape. Something like that. We're making all 13 battlegrounds available for play in AI, Quick Match and Unranked. Whereas Hero League and Team League are now the only games modes that will feature a map rotation. The ranked map rotation has been updated to include the following. Hanamura, welcome to Dragonshire, new players of Heroes of the Storm. Gonna be a first. Gonna be a little bit challenging because this is uh, one of the more difficult maps. Tomb of the Spider Queen, Curse Hollow Inferno Shrine, Sky Top of Braxis Holdout, Black... <laughs> Blackheart's Bay. Ah, oh, there's one map I didn't miss. Uh, Battlefield of Eternity. Alright, so no Garden. No Forehead Junction. What else is going on? No Garden, no Warhead Junction. Oh yeah, Towers of Doom. Catapults can now slightly overlap with one another to help prevent them from becoming stuck against one another when multiple catapults bunch up around the core. Got it. Oh yeah, and no, no sky temples here. Oh yeah, no haunted mines. Right. right. And now, balance. Okay, as we always do, we make a small prediction about which heroes got the nerf stick and which heroes got the buff. I'm going to assume what happens to each one based on my perception of the balance in the game. Now I'm not talking about Bolt of the Storm changes per se, because I don't know what they're planning with them. Uh, but I'm gonna say 
buff or change to Kerrigan, plus and minus equal amounts, maybe to balance out your talent tree, or maybe a slight buff. Uh, Rainer, maybe a slight buff, but mostly revolving around Bolt of the Storm, I suppose. Uh, Thrall, he got the rework, I know about that. So it's going to be buff and nerf, and it's going to be hard to say whether he will come out stronger or weaker, maybe. Uh, Lily maybe gets a small nerf. Hard to say. Malf definitely going to get nerfed. He's been the primary support for a long time. Probably alongside Uther right now. And Stitches... Hard to say. Maybe just a bolt change. Well, let's see. No longer has Bolt of the Storm. We'll now get Psionic Shift. Activate to teleport a short distance and deal 50 damage to enemies in the area. Enemy heroes hit, give Kerrigan 300% of the damage dealt as assimilation shields. So this is the Dwarf Toss treatment. It's both damage and survivability and you use it as an engage. It's a little bit strange because you already have Ravage as an engage as well. But Ravage is one, it's stoppable. You can get caught by Entangle halfway and now you could keep Ravage. For later you can do a bolt and then a ravage or when you don't have ravage on cooldown still i would say she probably doesn't really need it because she does have ravage but it is damage and shield so it's quite a decent uh, engage it's like a calamity on on yeah on overdrive no more bolt well i never took bolt anyway well okay sometimes i did with the full q stun build rainer with bolt was pretty hilarious no more bolt. And they don't give him anything in return. <laughs> poor, poor Rainer. Yeah, you want to use Ravage with reset, sure. Okay, Chain Lightning, longer cooldown, more bounces, less range on the bounces, cost more mana. That's bad. The range on bounces helped you to interrupt objectives. The extra bounce is one more proc to Frostwolf Resilience, which is nice, I guess. The damage of it is fairly low. It's half of your original damage, so you hit one more person for 180 damage or something. Far less often, so he becomes a worse laner by a big shot. A much worse solo laner and he already wasn't the best but he was good more mana less cooldown in the end that will gain you mana because you can't use your ability but kind of it won't because you weren't using it per se on cooldown anyway so this is a nerf this is clearly a huge nerf 50% less heal even though it procs more from your Q Feral Spirit will now hit all heroes along its path and travel further for enemy heroes hit. So his lockdown becomes a lot higher. All right. So we've looked at this and now let's look at what we know for there to be as well. We look at the rest because of course there's more. This is not going to be the only thing. <laughs> well, of course we know there's more. Comprehensive reading means analyzing what you're going to be reading, skimming through it fast, and then breaking it down. Of course, I knew there's going to be a rework because he had so many generic talents. <laughs> all right, all right. Ah, no more rabbit wolves. I always liked it. Rabbit wolves, like, no more rabbit wolves. Okay. Well, no more block. Season marksman. Remove rabbit. Okay. Okay. Everything is new. Well. Hey, they didn't do one of those things where you can see like uh, the entire overview. You remember those tables? Well, let's read this first. We started looking at Thrall for a talent update as many of his talents were older generic talents and Thrall ended up having a clear build path. Our pillar for this update was creating more talent diversity and unique ways to play. The changes to Feral Spirit are new opportunities for Thrall to make big plays while allowing him to continue his role as a lane bully or play with the team, depending on your playstyle. Overall, Thrall is now flush with quest talents, and this is something we wanted to explore, and we're excited for your feedback. Cool. 
So they, they remove this. And Rolling Thunder now also adds another bounce. So you can have four bounces. Echo of the Elements. Kill 10 minions or heroes within one and a half seconds. Thank you for the very clear tooltip. Well done, Blizzard. Within one and a half seconds of them being hit by Chain Lightning. And the reward is decrease the mana cost of Chain Lightning by 20. From 45 to 25. Kill 20 minions or heroes. And then you will gain an additional charge of Chain Lightning. Oh, ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Ice cream, anybody? Ding, 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 ding. Crash Lightning. It's all Lightning. Hit at least two enemy heroes with a single cast of Chain Lightning. Increase bounce damage by 10 up to a maximum of 400. Oh ho! Oh ho ho! That's a lot of extra damage! That is a lot of extra damage. That's like Shockwave Chain Lightning from Warcraft 3 times. Hit at least two enemy heroes 20 times. With a single cast of Chain Lightning. Wait, you, you gotta hit someone 20 times with one cast? Hit at least two enemy heroes 20 times with a single cast. How could you do? How could you hit 40 people with one Chain Lightning? <laughs> Phrasing, anyway, I think I get it. Uh, reward bounce of chain lightning. <laughs> no prioritizes enemy heroes. What? <laughs> okay. And and then what if you hit only one? Like it will prioritize like uh, pumpkins and do that or what? <laughs> no prioritize enemy heroes. Okay, whatever. Like. <laughs> No more Ride the Lightning, no more Spirit Journey, no more Envenom. Like, it will bounce to the Sky Temple only. Each enemy hero hit by Feral Spirit grants two charges of block, granting less than 75 physical armor. 50. Last until consumed or Feral Spirit is cast again. I don't know if I like that. It's like one of those boring, weak talents that Greymane Worgen has as well that end up just only getting picked if everything else on the same talent tier is butt. Anyway. Hit. Oh, well, you. Oh, never mind. You could have four times. Four times. Yeah, you could have like eight stacks, ten stacks. Oh, I get it. <laughs> That's pretty cool, actually. Mirror images, Rexar, and Vikings. You could have 18 charges of block. Seems good. More. You could have over 20 charges of block. Still less than Karazim's Earth Ally offers. But, yeah, that's pretty good. Of course, if you cast it again, they're lost. Hit 7 heroes with Feral Spirit. Progress is reset upon dying, or a feral spirit doesn't hit at least one enemy hero. Reward decreases the cooldown from 12 to 6, and decreases the mana cost from 30. Oh my god, this is. This is livid! This is lit! Ah! Okay, mana tide. Mana gained increased from 15 to 20. Added functionality. When mana tide procs. I like that they use, like, uh, layman's term. When mana tide procs. Now also reduces basic ability cooldowns by half a second. Oh. Nice. No more Winter, no more Stone Wolves. Maelstrom Weapon. Attack enemy heroes while Wind Fury's movement speed bonus is active. Reward increase attack damage by one. So one per hit. That's a pretty good reward, I guess. Attack 20 enemy heroes while Wind Fury's movement speed bonus is active. 30 to 40. Oh, they took that uh, Ride the Wind. Level 16, not so useful talent and embedded it as the second quest tier here. Okay, pretty cool. 
attack 40 enemy heroes while Wind Fury's movement spo uh, speed bonus is active. Permanently. Okay. What? Permanently gaining 15% increased movement speed. Ancestral Wrath. Each time Frostwolf Resilience activates, Thrall gains a stack of Ancestral Wrath up to a maximum of 8. Be really uninformed if I just stop reading there. Showing the importance once again of continuing to read. Activate to consume 8 stacks of Ancestral Wrath, stealing 15% of target hero's maximum health over 3 seconds. Thrall heals for 150% of this amount over 3 seconds. So let's say you steal from a 5000 HP stitches. You get uh, 750. You, you, you take away what? 750? 750. And then you gain something like what? 1200? Over three, that's the interesting part. Self ancestral healing. Restless Wolf's Giant Killer Spell Shield is removed. Frost Wolf's Grace moved from level 7. Healing amount increased from 100 to 150% of Feral Resilience. Cooldown decreased. Ah, well. This brings it back to the original amount, like it's more than what you gain now, but it's what it used to be. So in essence it hasn't changed, but it does have a lower cooldown, half cooldown. Hmm. Spirit Shield, every 45 seconds, gain 50 spell armor against the next enemy ability and subsequent abilities for one and a half second. Triggering Frostwolf Resilience reduces this cooldown by five seconds. Huh. Seems like a weak spell shield. Normally it's 30. You would now have to do three times Frostwolf Resilience in that period to reduce it to the original amount for spell shield. Seems like a weak version. Wait, what else does he have thir at 13? He, what, he gets only two abilities? Oh no, he had uh, Grace of Air. Okay, he still has Grace of Air. He gets this healing and he gets spell. Okay, so it's all survivability. Fork Lightning removed. Ride the Wind. These have both, both been embedded. This is the uh, level 7 thing with the Steel Ancestral Wrath. So these three have been reworked into different tiers. Thunderstorm. Cast Chain Lightning on a hero. Dying or casting it on the same hero twice in a row resets progress. Hmm? Dying or casting it on the same hero twice in a row. So you need to keep hitting different people with chain lightning. I hope there's a good indicator for that. You slow your target by 8% up to 40. When you reach a 40% bonus slow. You do more damage to the primary target. Uh, so they continue to be slowed the entire time until you die. Here's how I understand it. I chain lightning hero A. He gets slowed. So does everyone else that gets hit by it. I chain lightning hero 2. It hits both of them. They're both permanently slowed for 16%. I chain hero, lightning hero 1 again. They're now both slowed for 24% permanently. No? There's no duration here. Hero A... <laughs> Hero A and Hero 2.
And finally, when two when multiple heroes are 40% slowed permanently, you go stand in the core and they can't mount. They can't move. You never die, you never cast it again, and they're slow the rest of the game. You have to get all five at once. It doesn't say that. When, <laughs> when you chain lightning someone, they get slowed. And it never resets until you cast it on the same target or you die. <laughs> so good. I, I'm, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that finally we have permanent slow on enemy heroes spread around. It's a two second slow. It doesn't say that though. <laughs> no, I'm not memeing. I'm not memeing. I'm just a very literal person. No, I'm not memeing. I just don't get it. I'm stupid, okay? Uh, I guess I would have to launch BTR to see exactly uh, what's going on. Autistic? I mean, I don't know. Isn't autism usually like you don't get something, but you're also very good at something? Anyway. Alpha Wolf increases root duration from one to one and a half seconds. For three seconds after being hit by a feral spirit, Thrall's basic attack damage deal double giant killer. Interesting. That's pretty good. <laughs> Bolt of the Storm World Breaker decreases cooldown from 70 to 50 seconds. New functionality, no longer travels indefinitely, creates a pathing blocker for three seconds. Okay. That's pretty interesting. Okay, Hans says it's a two second slow. It doesn't say it here, but it says so in the game. Yeah, the quest never completes and will reset even at maximum stacks. I still don't fully get it. I would have to test it. So, I saw this in Skara's stream when he was trying out Hots. He was like, "Does it create like a build? Like, does it create a blocker?" And Dunk Train was like, "No, it doesn't. It just looks like it." <laughs> Arpsack. <laughs> That's a great point. Since we're being literal, Arpsack, how can Thrall? Yeah, you you said how can Thrall's basic attacks get hit by a feral spirit? They're not an actual object in game. For three seconds after being hit by a feral, Thrall's basic attacks. <laughs> it's true. How? Listen, like, I, I don't get it, like... <laughs> okay. New talent, Windrush. Activate to teleport to a target... You know, I think this is why all my teachers hated me in school. Because I took everything literally. I'm, tr I, I'm trying, okay? I'll try not to... I'll try to be more creative with understanding small mistakes. Uh, we started looking at Thrall. Oh yeah, we read this already. Okay, so pretty cool. I'm definitely going to try out Thrall today on the PTR. Uh, moving on to Lily. Bolt of the Storm removed. Okay. Manacle. Oh my god, lots of changes. Alright, let's dig into this. But let me have a sip of water first. Oops, I just poured water all over my hand. Ouch. Now my table is wet. Uh, yeah, Lily had bolt. <laughs> it had the lowest pick rate bolt in the entire game. Okay. Um, mouth. Mana cost reduced from 20 to 15. Mana cost for regrowth. Oh, yeah, for Moonfire. For regrowth, 5 mana up. Heal over time ticks reduced from 31 to 28. Passive mana regen functionality removed. 
your Moonfire deals 75 bonus damage to minions. No longer monsters or mercs. Like neutral uncaptured mercs and objectives no longer take bonus damage. But if you kill nearby kill nearby minions. This could barely have been more vague. It could just say like kill or something. <laughs> What does it mean, kill nearby minions? With Moonfire, do you have to last hit them? I don't know. Um, kill nearby minions. For every five nearby lane minions killed, increase this damage bonus by 1%. After hitting 25% additional bonus damage, it now also applies to mercs and monsters. Understood. Vengeful Roots. Entangling Roots also spawns a broccoli that lasts for 10 seconds. Damage increased from 64 to 70. Trent damage no longer gains level scaling. Oh, what? Why not? Oh, that's why. Hit heroes with entangling roots is your quest and every enemy hero hit increases the damage of the trend by eight. Keep reading. Uh. Uh, okay. And normally it would be like 3 damage per level. Maybe. About 4%. 4% on 64. About 3 three damage. 3 and then 4 and so on. Now it's 8 per entangle. Well, that should be pretty good. But if you're gonna spam entangle. You know this is what I don't like on supports. There is no cap. Yeah. I don't like this. I didn't like it on Tyrande's Owls. I didn't like it on Tyrande's Lunar Flare, and I don't like it on Malfurion, because these heroes, they run out of mana, and now you're going to have supports burning all their mana, rather than playing smartly and waiting to see when you're going to cast Entangle to stop someone from getting through the gate, rather than blowing it on cooldown, instead you're just going to quest, 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 quest with Entangle. Don't like it too much. I don't know how you guys feel about that. I could be wrong, but like maybe supports deserve to have fun as well, like this. Full moon fire moved from level 13. Mana cost reduction decreased from 10 to 5. Radius bonus decreased. Versatile is gone. Strangling vines. But I had fun with him before. Yeah, me too. Heroes hit by entangling roots have all healing received reduced by 30% for the duration of the root effect. Okay, that is a good change. Having double damage on strangling vines was kind of weird. It added about 200 damage over time. It was not a competitive talent, but this is more interesting. It makes you think. Uh, no more cleanse, no more mule. Wow. Okay, so mouth now becomes an entangling anti-oxidizing support with healing fountain like qualities and no longer has cleanse which you would need uther for hardened focus hey they skip down 13 so he still has ice block i heard he has no longer got ice block but level 13 is not here. Isera's Gift. The heal over time portion of regrowth is increased by 40% while you're above 75% health. Okay, so is that a snapshot when you cast it or when you hurt Malf, he will retroactively start giving less ticks of healing for regrowth or more? Yeah, I mean less. Upon casting Innervate, Malfurion gains 50 mana and its cooldowns refresh 50% faster for 5 seconds. Interesting. Interesting. He still has Ice Block. Right. Okay, got it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you would assume so since they didn't say it got removed, right? Why would they remove Mule? They've been removing Mule on many things. No more Bolt, 
Nightmare has been renamed Astral Communion. Hey, isn't it that card where you discard your whole hand and you gain 10 mana? Slow effect has been removed. Yeah, it was like 50% slow. When activated, channel for one second and then instantly teleport to the target location. What? This shares a cooldown with Twilight Dream? Huh? Okay, so the thing is, I think they thought this was too strong. I think they thought this was too strong. Because, uh... You could bolt in the middle of the opponent at level 20 in competitive. You would Twilight Dream and it was almost unstoppable. And you would just do a full team silence. You didn't even need good position. You would just bolt there and then Twilight Dream. But they give him this piece of crap instead. <laughs> like, I fully support removing Bolt Twilight Dream. It was a power play. It was good. It was strong, but it was too strong. And it had very little counterplay. But one second delay is... I mean, do they know where you're gonna go? Like, uh, what if you don't want to go anymore? Can you cancel it? It is pretty bad, but... I'm still glad that the other part is gone. Let's see how it is. Now, without cleanse, Malph can not be solo support first pick anymore. Like he was for so long. But now this patch is not going to be the one used at mid-season brawl. Without cleanse, Malph can only be second support. So he would have to go for root build or moon burn build and be like... I'm gonna stack my entangle damage. I'm gonna make so many broccolis. You can play without cleanse if you go Guardian of Ancient Kings, Uther and Melf. Or maybe you add Medivh to the mix. Or Zarya. Lunara with level 20 cleanse, abolish magic. Takes a little bit long to deny those level 1, 4 ganks. It's interesting, man. Uh... This is just gonna make Uther number one support, no? I already wondered whether whether uh, Uther was not the best already, secretly. Because Stunlock will always be strong. Uther destroys Stunlock teams. And Malph was just able to manage them. Rhaegar and Uther probably gonna be the primary supports. Uther because he wrecks stuns, Rhaegar because he can still handle them. Now, Ariel and Lucio already didn't have cleanse, which is why they're generally not first pick or they get combined with the second support. Malph is going to fall in that category as well. So I, I think uh, I'm moving Malph down from tier S to tier 1 or 2. But we'll have to wait and see because uh, I haven't played around with it yet. Uh, stitches. Bolt of the Storm has been removed. Regenerative Bile renamed to Potent Bile. Healing and movement speed bonuses have been removed. Putrid Bile duration bonus increased from 2 to 6 seconds. Now also increases the slow effect from 35 to 45%. Hungry Hungry Stitches. No more damage bonus. But while active, Gorge has increased range. And can be repeatedly racist. Can be repeatedly recast until the first target is expelled. That's a lot of... Denial. Do, if they mean that he gets three seconds on top of the last gorge every time. Gorging a target outside of melee range will teleport to... What? <laughs> Wait. What? That's his bolt? <laughs> He's like a frog. He's jumping back and forth, snaking his tongue out and consuming prey. It's so strange. I want to test this out ASAP. Basic attack, or you can go cannibalize. Basic attacks against enemy heroes, heal stitch for 5%. That's interesting. And he still has amp heal.
They don't say there's a max range either, so maybe you can teleport and eat Avatar from across the map. And then teleport back to eat the Varian at your core and then teleport to the objective eating Falstaff. That would be kind of interesting. Some new mounts and skins. All right, AI player's intelligence has been fixed on Hanamura. Now it's time to fix player intelligence on Hanamura. By the way, please never think that pushing is useless on Hanamura. Oh my God, you took a specialist on Hanamura. GG open mid. There is no mid on Hanamura. And pushers are pretty good. True shot R will now display visual effects. Ah, good. Got it, Halogen. Thank you. The Gorge upgrade is extremely short range. Okay, okay. What's a Mega Enforcer? Oh, the camp that I kill with one bribe shot every time? 6,600 damage. Oh, no, no, the middle one. Will no longer leash after consuming a hero. Okay. Capturing an altar will now properly reset the player's AFK. Man, they had AFK issues on every map. A small shadow will no longer appear at the location where a new troop is about to spawn on Gravity Set to Love. Lol. <laughs> Enemy mercs? No more longer fresh meat. Okay. Basic attack, splash and cleave damage will now correctly reveal targets who are hit while inside the bush and vents. Huh. Polymorph. Locust will now help with mercs. We wouldn't need to dodge. Because it'd be dead. Oh, wow! Nice! Does anybody want to play a game, Kappa 3? How impressive! Is that a reference to what happened yesterday? <laughs> 